Today we're going to be learning about geometric sequences. A geometric sequence is when the ratio between consecutive terms is the same. So you guys are going to see numbers in an order with a specific order. Now we're going to learn about the terms common ratio. The common ratio is basically what is being multiplied to the previous item um, in this sequence. So instead of adding or subtracting to get the next number, we're going to be multiplying. And don't worry, it might look like we're going to be dividing, but I'll explain what the difference is. So let's do some examples. It says to write the next three terms of the geometric sequence. Well, first, I do want to find out what the common ratio is. So as I'm looking at my first sequence, I see that I'm multiplying by two. Okay, so that's going to be my common ratio that we're going to start using. Okay, so the next three terms is just multiplying by two. So 24 times two is 48. 48 times two is 96. 96 times two is 192. And those are the next three terms of the geometric sequence. So what I want you guys to do is find out what the common ratio is and what the next three terms of these sequences are. Check back with your answers. All right, so here's what you guys should have. For the middle uh, sequence, we are multiplying by three. That is our common ratio. So you're just taking each number, multiplying it by three. Now, this last one, you might have put in, hey, you divide by four, okay? But the common ratio is, again, when you're multiplying. So instead of saying divided by four, you're going to say you're multiplying by one-fourth. It is the same thing. So then you go through and start dividing. And I'm going to want fractions unless the sequence has decimals, guys. So please use fractions unless the sequence already has decimals. So instead of dividing by four, you're multiplying by one fourth. Now we're going to graph the geometric sequences. All you have to do is create a t-chart and um, then plot your points. So we know that in our X and Y t-charts for sequences, our first term on this first sequence is a 32, our second was 16, our third is eight, and I'm running out of room, but our fourth is four, and then our fifth term is a two. So we're gonna plot these points and see what these geometric sequences end up looking like. I know I do want to kind of spread things out on my chart, so my x-axis, I'm gonna spread it out just so that it's easier to graph. Now, I do know I also want to change the, um, I want to change my scale of my y axis. I need to go up to 32. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up by fours. Okay, so we have four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and then 32. And I'm going to stop there just because I know that my first term is 32. So now I'm going to start graphing. So I go over to one, then up to 32. I go over to two and then go up to 16. So you can see a pretty big drop there. Then I go to three and I go to eight and then four is up at four and then our fifth term is at two. So I'm gonna kind of put that right there. So now when we connect the dots guys, you're gonna see it's the swooping action, okay? And that's what the geometric sequence look like. They're not linear at all. Okay, so go ahead and graph the next two geometric sequences. You have to change the scale. So just make sure you have that and your graphs should have a little swoop to it. They are not going to be linear. Come back and check your answers when you're done. All right, so these are what the two functions should look like. They are going down. Now, if we look at these geometric sequences, guys, we know that the numbers are obviously going down. So we are, um, our common ratio ends up being like for the first one we have it goes down by one half okay it also again goes down by one half uh during the second one and then hey look it goes down one half again for that third sequence so because it's going down it is um obviously the slope is kind of going down as well in the graph it's a very visual way to show that but those are what your graph should look like now we're going to learn how to do the equations for a geometric sequence. So this is a little different than our arithmetic sequence. We are going to be dealing with some exponents. So we have this important equation that we have, and we know that the nth term or the n is standing for what term we're talking about. If you're asked to find the 27th term or the 7th or the 100th term, you're going to turn that, that n into that number. We already know that a1 stands for the first 
term in the sequence, and your common ratio is an R. So if you are multiplying by four, if you're multiplying by one seventh, that's what you're gonna plug in for R. So let's go ahead and use this equation and um, use it in this real world experience. So clicking on the zoom out button on a mapping website doubles the side lengths of a square map. So they give us this chart, then they say write an equation for the nth term. So we're gonna stop and only do that first, then we'll move on. So when we're writing this equation, we need to know what the first term is, which is five. It's the first term in the whole sequence. Then we have to find out what the common ratio is. So what is it doing each time? Well, the, equa the word problem actually told us, but if we're looking, we're multiplying by two, okay? Each time, five times two is 10, 10 times two is 20. So we're multiplying by two each time. So what we're gonna do is just plug it into the equation. So we have an equals our five times two n minus one. We cannot combine the five and the two because the two has your exponent there. So this is just what the equation's gonna look like. It's pretty simple. You just plug it in, you're done. You don't have to simplify it at all. Now on B, they're asking us to find and interpret a eight. They're wanting us to find the eighth term, guys. Okay, remember N stands for term, so the eighth term. So we're just gonna plug in that number. So eight of the eighth, which means the eighth term is five times two, and then up in the exponents, we're gonna do eight minus one. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify that exponent, and we're gonna have A to the eighth equals five times, uh, I'm sorry, two to the seventh power. All right, so then we're even gonna simplify it even more. So you're gonna to have to find out what the seventh, two to the seventh power is. That is two times itself, seven times. You can use a calculator if you wish, but when we simplify it, we have a to the eighth equals five times 128. And then we have to do 128 times five. It's gonna be a pretty big number. So the eighth term that we end up getting is 640. So if you were to continue this pattern for a few more times, you should have 640. Now what that means is when you have eight clicks on that uh, zoom out button of that map, we're gonna be able to see 640 uh, miles, okay? So that's gonna be the square map. We're gonna see all of that with the side lengths. So you're gonna be able to see a lot of stuff going on, okay? Now we're gonna skip this next question. This is gonna help us, and we'll be able to find out the answer to this when we start working more with exponents in our lessons. So we're skipping numbers or letter C in this word problem, and we're gonna move on to the next one. So I want you guys to go ahead and start trying this next word problem. It's asking about an email chain that you're sending to six friends, and then they send it to more, they send it to six friends themselves. So you're gonna write an equation for that. And then you're going to uh, find out what the ninth term of a geometric sequence is where you find where you have a couple things given to you. So go ahead and try these on your own and uh, check back for your answers. All right, so here are the two answers that we got for uh, these last two problems. So when we start an email chain, we sent it to six friends. So that was the first term in our sequence and then when each of our friends forwards it to six people, that means it's multiplying by six each time, which ends up being our ratio. So all you had to do, guys, was plug it into the equation. You didn't even have to simpl simplify it. That's it. Now, the next one was a little har harder. We did have to find the ninth term of a geometric sequence, but in instead of telling us what the first term was, they told us the third, but they did give us our ratio of three. So we knew that as it was going on, that we were multiplying by three, but I had to go backwards in time. So I had to find what 81 divided by three was twice. So when I divided 81 by three once, that was the second term. Then I divided by three again, and that's the first term. So I was going backwards. The first term in the sequence was nine, and we had our ratio, our common ratio of three. So what I did was I went ahead and I put it all over here, plugged it into the equation, Okay, then I went ahead and plugged in that ninth term. Okay, when we're looking for the ninth term, we plug in for n, and I went ahead and plugged it in over here in red and uh, simplified it. 
So I found out what three to the eighth power was, which is three times itself eight times. Then I have to had to multiply that by nine as well, and it became a huge number of 59,049. And that is how you got your answers.